Today on Real Trending, we're talking to Alex Vidal. He is the president of ERA. He's been in the role for almost a year now and really had some great things to say about mindset and leadership. Basically, he talked a lot about how he has approached it and he used his training for an Ironman as part of that. He truly does challenge himself. And as he's challenging himself, he's challenging the, the brokers in his network and the agents to really reach high for their goals. And I really enjoyed listening to this podcast. It's not as much about true broker business that we usually cover. And instead, it's really about leadership growth and how to grow as a leader and take risks and learn from your failures and and really keep going to grow your business, to do the things you want to do in life and in business. So I hope you enjoy this one. I sure did. And thanks so much. So Alex, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me, Tracy. I've enjoyed yeah. our conversation so far. Yeah, great. So um, yeah, we were talking about his podcast and, and some of the celebrities he's had on it in the past. So uh, very cool stuff. Yeah, so you it's been almost a year since you've been named um, president of ERA Real Estate. So yeah. tell me a little bit about how it's going. Uh, it has been <laughs> true to my form, a whirlwind. Uh, um, I started, I guess it's been about eight and a half months now. I'm up to, I think, 41 trips uh, to our different franchisees and different events and stuff like that. It's been, if you were to craft... It's funny how the universe works. I think if you were to craft a role prior to my knowing, prior, prior to becoming president of the R and say, Hey, Alex, if you were to be a brand president, how would you, how would you carve that role out? I don't think I scripted it any better. It's been really fun. Our network, our network's really cool. They're really hands on, um, not only with their agents, but they're also hands on with each other as broker owners. And that's kind of my, that's kind of my style too. It's not kind of it is, and so you're you're walking into a network that operates at the same frequency that you do, and it's been it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Love it. Well, we have one um, ERA brokerage on the CEO group that that I manage, and he's definitely got a ton of energy. So, um, so yeah, he's in Florida. Um, and you're known for that kind of lively coaching. And I've, that's what, when I've talked to people about you, they've all said, oh my gosh, you have to talk to them about mindset. Um, so tell me, like, what are some of the ways that real estate leaders and agents can kind of master the mindset? And, and tell me a little bit about your coaching on that. Yeah. So mindset's a super interesting thing because I, I think people automatically assume that you're born and you're just naturally positive or you're, or you're naturally negative. When in reality, you can, you can work on your mindset the same way you work on your physical fitness. Like I'm working, I'm training for an Ironman right now and, and all that stuff. And, and so it, it's one of those things that we have a daily choice that we can wake up to. I always joke like, you know, there are times that we don't want to get out of bed in the morning and it doesn't matter who you are. And so what are you working towards? And and like actually, I, where is this is video, right? Like this is going to yes. be a video. Yeah. Okay, so I have on my that board right there is my vision board. Okay, uh, as a daily reminder of you know the things I want to focus on. What's my purpose every time that I wake up? Um, what am I shooting towards? And I I think that well, we if we're able to program our brain on how we analyze the world around us. All of a sudden, what happens is when you look at salespeople, if you think of science class, this is a, this, I got this from a TED talk, by the way, a guy named Sean Hager talks about positive, neutral, and negative. People who are 37%, people who are positive versus neutral or negative are 37% better at sales and they're 31% more productive. And when I talk to realtors all the time, I'm like, hey, hey what's the biggest deal you've ever closed? And they say, oh, it's a, it's a $2 million deal. Well, how did you feel when you closed that deal? Like, oh my God, I felt like I could walk on water. Cool. What's the biggest deal you've ever lost? And they're like, oh, I also lost a $2 million deal. I'm like, how did that make you feel? Like, I didn't want to leave the house. And so it really shows you that when you are in a positive state of mind, you, you feel like you can conquer anything. And so you got to work towards it. I think um, as my best friend gave me a quote that says, it's actually on the top of that vision board, 
between disappointment and greatness is opportunity and choice. Um, we have a choice every day to wake up and work towards either or not work towards anything, be disappointed or work towards things that can make us great. And if we focus, especially in, in a time like our industry today, if you're able to focus on the things that you can control, then all of a sudden, you, because you can control it, you can actually change it. And and that's where I think, in a, going back to the original question of like mindset, et cetera, like that's how you can win this game because no matter what gets thrown your way, if you have a positive mindset, you can you can continue to conquer it. I'm a big believer in that. I um, in neuroplasticity and being able to train your brain and um, kind of they they say manifesting, but not manifesting in the in the way of I I'm going to manifest a car, you know, like like yeah. my dream no, car. The, the secret oh. is about yeah. it's yeah. manifesting. And, um, and, and so I definitely believe, and, and Larry Kendall even has part of that as part of his training with the writing, uh, you know, gratitude, um, you know, kind of what are you grateful for every day? Starting out with that positive, you know, great, you know, what are you grateful for? Um, there's a couple of podcasts I listen to. One is the, um, is it school of greatness? School of greatness. Yeah, with, uh, with Lewis, Lewis Hose. Yes. Yes. House, hose, something like that. Yeah. Yes. And then uh, Mel Robbins as well. I, I really sure. love her podcast and they talk a lot about that. And it is really about training. Like I started journaling every morning with a purpose and, yep. and things like that. So um, it does, it does take work. It's not just something that is an automatic. So like, what are the types of things that you encourage um, agents to do to really continue that positive mindset. Yeah, that's great. So it, it, it's super interesting because it's like fitness. People all of a sudden get in shape and then they start eating like crap again and they stop working out not as frequently. And it's like, well, no, you, you got to maintain it. So the, whatever we encourage our agents to do, we encourage them to continue doing it, especially when they feel good. Uh, when it comes to gratitude, that TED talk I was talking about uh, is by a guy named Sean Aker. He talks about the happiness, secrets to happiness at work. And he has a gratitude, his gratitude rule was you write down three things for which you're grateful for every day and you don't repeat yourself. So I can't be grateful that I'm president of ERA every day. Um, and just cause I'm always one to push things a little bigger. My rule was I would write down five things for which I was grateful for every day. Um, and there's a reason why I do pen to the paper versus, you know, in my notes in my phone and I'll share with you why in a minute. So then one day, many years ago, uh, I was the nail, not the hammer, had a really bad day. I wrote down the five things for which I was grateful for. And I still felt like crap. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm just going to keep writing. And I ended up writing 25 things for which I was grateful for that day. And when I let the one thing that happened to me that was bad, take my vision away from the 25 things that were great, that, I was, that really happened well. So I made a new rule, which was, okay, on a great day, I'm going to write down five things for which I'm grateful for. On a bad day, I'm going to write 25 things for which I'm grateful for. <laughs> Come along. I have four boys, uh, 26, 17, 14-year-old twins. I had my 17-year-old doing it. And he came to me and he was like, so dad, on, on a great day, I write down five things for which I'm grateful for. Yeah. On a good day, great day, I write down 25 things. He goes, what if I have an okay day? And I'm like, okay, that's a great question, Aiden. What do you think you should do? He says, how about 10? And so we developed the rule. This is what I coach my agents to do. And you literally can see if they do it every day within three weeks, you can see the shift in their body, their frequency, their energy. Five, 10, 25 rule. Great day, you write down five things. Okay day, you write down 10. Bad day, you write down 25. And the reason you do a pen to the paper is because there's a, I, I love like you, I love psychology. I love, I love all that stuff. Uh, there are these things called endowment effect and loss aversion. And endowment effect is the principle that once you own something, you place a higher value on it versus something that you don't. Loss aversion is the principle that the power of losing something is two times stronger than the power of a gain. And the way that people can gain ownership of things is by touching. So you no longer see the uh, please do not touch signs. It's stores, retailers want you to touch it because now they think that you're taking ownership of it. And so we encourage our people to take, you know, pen to the paper because you're writing it down. It's like you're taking ownership of that gratitude. And you see it. I've been through a lot in my life and, and those, those kind of exercises and also having a vision board like to remind me that these are the things I work towards every day. And 
when we get all these different distractors that come into our life, I can look at my board and say, does it get me closer to anything on that board? Uh, and if it doesn't, I can easily say no and not feel good about it either. Well, I have an 18 year old. I don't think I could talk her into writing things down, but we do yeah. go over positive affirmations every morning before school. Um, That's awesome. because mornings are not her thing. So she, she says, give me, give me the positive affirmations. Um, usually I write her something too in her, in her lunchbox, believe it or not. I still make her lunch. She's 18. I got yeah. one more year and she's gone. So, you know, I don't, I don't mind. <laughs> my uh, my boy's mom still makes their lunch too, even for my seventeen year old. So that's yep. awesome. It's super cool. Yeah. Um. So what is the relationship between like mindset and goal setting? Ah, uh, great question. Well, they go hand in hand. Um. Because what happens is, and it's interesting. I want to make sure I look at all my notes if that's a if that's okay. Just because sure. I want to. We made notes prior because I you know I can get going and I want to make sure we stay on the same on this on the same you know kind of plan or, or yep. line. But what's really interesting is. Goal setting is great and attacking your goals when things are going great are super easy, but it's your mindset that's going to carry you through the days that you don't want to, or when you're scared. I quite frankly had this moment this morning where I'm training for an Ironman triathlon and I have about four weekends left. Ironman triathlon is a 2.4 mile swim, 112 mile bike, and then a 26.2 mile run. And this morning, my coach sent me my next two weeks of training. And on Saturday, I have a five and a half hour workout. On Sunday, I have a 15 mile run. The following week, I have a six hour workout, bike and run on Saturday and a 20 mile run on Sunday. And I thought to myself, oh my God, what am I doing? And it was that mindset of just... Hey, you, you've stacked a lot of wins along the way. You've got this, you've done this before, not to that level, but close, like you got it. And so I, I think the first one is with goals and mindset is when it comes to goals, you have, you have to have a really big goal, like a, a goal that's so big that when you share it with people, hence I'm doing an Ironman or a month and a half after that, I'm escaping Alcatraz. People come to me and like, are you crazy? Like you have, you have a screw loose. And I think that I want, at least for me, I want to have goals that are just scary because they push me. Um, and so I think going along with goal setting, realtors need to have this crazy goal that if they were to share it out loud, people are going to think they're crazy. The second thing with goal setting, especially when it comes to mindset, is having the plan on how to do it. If you're going to go towards a goal, my Ironman, for example, I have a coach and I wake up every single day knowing exactly what I'm going to do to get closer to that and having a coach who actually believes in me and, and, and chipping it away at it. Um, also mindset wise, and you got to, I remind myself this all the time is that anybody who's wherever the, at the pinnacle of their career, understanding that they didn't get there overnight. Like I'm the, by the time I'm done with the Ironman, I would tell you, well, in January alone, I trained 95 hours. So people will see me racing in, in, in August or April, sorry but they won't see literally the hundreds of hours or the thousands of miles and the blood, the sweat, the tears, you know, to get there and understand it's not an overnight success. Um, also the mindset is of being open-minded because in attacking these goals, the mindset is you're not going to be able to do it by yourself. You're going to have to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you that can help you. Um, and then the last one, especially when it comes to mindset and tying into goal setting is having this inner motivation. Um, something that's greater than uh greater than just crossing the finish line like what are you getting throughout that journey what are you experiencing what are the wins because the the actual crossing the finish line in our last year you know i sold literally in one week last year i escaped alcatraz on a sunday i got promoted on a wednesday and on friday um i closed on my home and so I was going through a divorce and, and closed on my home. And all, I can tell you every single one of those moments were super fleeting. Like they felt great the moment, but it was having the mindset of not worrying about the destination, but really, you know, enjoying that, that journey along the line and having a strong mindset is going to push you. So when you don't want to get out of bed, you have this, this mindset to say, well, I got to do it anyways, let's go. And then having the commitment to do it. Yeah. And you talked um, about grit or, you know, I've heard you say that, mention that word quite a bit. 
um, yeah. in, in previous uh, interviews and, and articles. And I think that's kind of that motivation you're talking about is that grit to, to yeah. keep going. Um, I have a friend who actually she was sponsored as an Ironman triathlete. Wow. Um, she was amazing. She was um, she's retired from it now, but um, she was a Hall of Fame swimmer as well in college and just kind of kept challenging herself. But when I think of grit, I think of her, honestly, because yep. she just will push through to meet her goals. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you think about grit. Well, I believe in it enough that I have it tattooed on my rib cage. Uh, <laughs> I literally have the word, I have two tattoos. I have the word grit where the eyes and exclamation point in my rib cage. And then on my inner arm, I have uh, a skull with a rose. And I got these both at 44 years old. I wasn't like I was young and, and I got them. And to me, it was because, and I'm an open book, by the way. Um, I was going through a rough time in my marriage. And going back to gratitude, it coincidentally is what really helped me as I went through it. And I remember sitting on a beach in Melbourne, Florida, and right behind this beach was a coffee shop and they were playing Bob Marley and did not have my phone, didn't have anything with it. And I just sat down and for the first time ever, I was doing gratitude exercises about things that I was grateful for about myself. Because I'm always grateful for things that happen to us or happen for us, but I actually never took time to be grateful for who I was as a human. And one of them was that I was a very gritty individual. And because, you know, I had my son at 19, my first son at 19, didn't graduate college, have, have worked for real estate companies in four different states, had been divorced before, I've lost it all twice. Like I've been through a lot. Um, and I think having that grit is what allowed me to push through and, and get to where I am today. And it's important because whether that grit be exhibited in work, whether that grit be exhibited in, in personal situations, if that grit gets exhibited in doing an Ironman or a crazy triathlon and persevering, um, those are the victories that you can rely on and look back on and say kind of what I touched upon before, like I've been here, I've done it. You can push through. Do you have the grit, that, that indomitable spirit to push through? And like last year in, in Alcatraz, I had that moment where for the first time ever at a triathlon, I was scared for my life. Like I was legit scared. I'd been in the water way longer than anticipated. The currents were sweeping people a mile down shore uh, from where we were supposed to get out. Um, and it was one of those things like, hey, you put in the time, you put in the effort, you, you, you're used to the cold now. Like just lean into the grit, go through, push through. Um, and then when you're confronted with things going forward, guess what? You can look back and say, I've done this before. It's okay. Let's keep rocking. Um, and that's why for me, grit's a really really special word for me. Yeah. Well, that's great. Um, and we're going to kind of transition to some actual brokerage stuff now, which I guess this was also brokerage stuff, because if you have a big goal and you have the mindset and everything you can achieve. Um, but let's talk about agent growth. So um, obviously, there's a lot going on in the industry right now. And we just had the, the big um, settlement from NAR and anywhere has settled with these commission losses. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. What are some of the things that you're doing with the agents or with um, recruiting that will help them see the opportunity in the industry and not all the negativity that is going around right now? Sure. Great question. Um, so if you've ever ridden a bike, if you look to the right, where do you go? You go to the right. So for us, whether if it's, if it's broker based, it's understanding that our agents are need help more than ever before and, uh, and helping our leaders and broker owners find who, who those people are, have legit conversations with them that can solve to whatever concerns they may be, that they may have and coaching them through it and getting involved myself in, in making calls to potential recruits that are to help them cross the line. But more than anything, I can't recruit for all of VRA. So I need to teach, I need to coach and let our broker owners see the path, have them execute on it, have them start to stack wins. And then all of a sudden you see this just momentum go on their end. With the agents, it's really the same thing. Like there's a lot of noise, but we can't control that. 
right? What we can control are the activities that we do every day to take care of those that are in our sphere of influence and grow our sphere of influence. And so I personally get involved in coaching a lot of our agents throughout the country on how to exactly do that. Um, because I can't control inventory. I can't control what NAR does. I can't control interest rates. Like I can't control any of that. What I do know are that there are people that are getting married, getting divorced, having kids, kids moving in, kids moving out, job losses, job promotions, job relocations, deaths in the family, and they need our help. And so how do we engage with those people? How do we find them? How do we genuinely connect with them? And then how can we best serve them? And that's what I help in, ta in, tangent, in conjunction with our team to help them deliver and execute. Okay. And as, as a leader uh, you know, of, uh, of ERA, what are your main goals in 2024? What are what is your the what are your big you know things that you want to get done this year? Yeah, um, so I'll call it raving fans, role model, destination. Um, my goal is to make sure that our agents are raving fans of both their broker owners and of ERA, and if we're able to do that. And you do that by doing two things. You help your agents make more money and live a better life. If I can help them do that, because I'm an expense to the company, by the way, like I don't generate revenue for the company. I'm an expense. The agents are the, the bosses. They're the ones that generate revenue. If we can do that, then what happens is other agents in the marketplace will look at these agents and say, wait, wait, everybody's business is declining, but your business is going up. I see you happy. What's happening at ERA? And they're going to want to join the movement, right? When that happens, our broker owners now become raving, even bigger raving fans of ERA. Now, that's the that's the raving fan piece. Anywhere having you know owning five uh, six brands: ERA, Coal Bankers, Century Twenty One, Corcoran, and Sotheby's, uh, and and um, Better Homes and Garden. I want the other five brands to look at ERA and say, "What are they doing that their per agent production is going up? What are they doing that uh, their agent count is going up?" What are they doing that they're opening up in markets that nobody thought possible, right? And then all of a sudden, we become the role model for the rest of anywhere. And if we do that, what then happens is uh, we then become the destination where some of the, which I love, by the way, where other employees within anywhere are looking at ERA and saying, I want to be a part of that. Like, that's fun. That's making a difference. They're making a lot of money. They're happy doing it. Their broker owners love it. And so if we can do that, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? We start by making the agents the raving fans. All of a sudden, everything else will, will kind of take care of itself. So that's my vision and our team's vision for 2024. I love that. Um, what excites you the most about the real estate industry in the next year? Uh, <laughs> for me, I think it, it, it's this is going to sound kind of cliche, but the one thing we've forgotten in our industry is the ability to have deep, meaningful connections with people that are not in the industry, especially now with all the noise that's going on and it's getting really mainstream now. So we're getting a lot of questions. I don't, quite frankly, I don't think a lot of people know how to coach and teach that because they want to teach AI and they want to teach chat, ch chat GPT and all this other stuff. When in reality, and that's no, now that's no longer the disruptor, that's where everybody is. So that's the, that's the norm. The disruptor now is the ability to have these really great conversations with people. And so if I can help coach our agents to have those conversations and build stronger relationships, they're just going to be happier in general because they have stronger relationships and it will lead to more business. So that's what really excites me for 2024. Really excited. I think we're going to crush it. Yeah. Real estate is all about relationships and, um, you know, it's the core of the industry. So for sure. You know, it, it is Tracy, but everybody's getting away from it because yeah. they, they don't want to, they, they'd rather have an email do the talking for them, or they'd rather have social media do the talking for them, or they don't want to sit down and actually like have write a, write a script for a video or do a video and just be themselves. They want something else. Who's not them write it. And when the average consumer knows 12 realtors, that's like an NAR stat. You know, people are going to do business with people they like and they trust. So are they really liking and trusting you or are they liking and trusting who they who they think you are and you're not really because a computer wrote whatever it is that you're saying? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, 
So in every leader's life, there's always that aha moment where you pivoted, shifted. Um, it sounds like you might have had many, many aha moments going through some of the things that you did. But leadership wise, what was that moment for you that's most impactful? I have when I was doing that podcast, mm -hmm. I would always get asked, what were the common denominators among the super successful? I was asked enough that I came up with the top nine. And I recently came up with number 10. I came up with this in 2020 and it was mine. And this was my uh, kind of my aha moment. And it was to not allow happiness to act as an anchor in my life. And the way it came about was I was running this company in Florida, privately held real estate company. When I started, we had two offices and you know, 42, 43 agents. When I left, we had close to 600 agents and six offices without acquisitions, pure organic growth, one on growth. And I was being offered ownership in the company, all these things. They funded my entire podcast, traveling the country. Like I had a blast, like we talked about before this started. But, and I love the home that we lived in. We had an acre of land. My three boys placed, my three little guys played soccer. We had a whole soccer field in the back. Like it was pretty cool. Friends, family, everybody's in South Florida. But when I looked at my life and my career and where I wanted to be in a year from that moment, three years from that moment, five years from that moment, which was to go national, right? Um, that company, even though I was super happy, I was ecstatic actually, it didn't play a role in that. And I had a choice. I had a choice to either sit in that happiness and let it hold me back as an anchor or yeah. let everything go and take a bet on myself, come to anywhere, run Coldwell Banker in Dallas, Fort Worth. If I did a good enough job, there was the potential to, to grow. And obviously that turned out to be present in the VRA. So the, the biggest aha for me was don't allow that, that happiness to hold you back from what you're truly destined to do. And you, you may lose the happiness, but I would rather, I would rather take the risk and lose than stay happy and have that think that moment of, you know, what if? And uh, one of the reasons why I'm even doing the Iron Man, it's like it, this is, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? Uh, I'm already 45, and so it was one of those things. Like, what if I, what if I could have done one? Well, I mean, I'll, you know, I don't want to think that. Uh, don't let that happiness holding you back. That that is really um, great. I've never heard it put that way. And it's so true. I mean, you could be very content in what you're doing, but, you know, you if you're wanting more and you're afraid to make that leap, you're going to regret it. You are. And, and you know, I looked at it and said, well, great, I'm happy today. But if I don't make this leap, am I going to be happy in a year? And, and I probably wouldn't be. And so it, it sucked having to leave in the moment when you were happy. But the that's when the opportunity, you know, presented itself. And I didn't know if a time came that I wasn't going to be happy and then not have that opportunity. Uh, but you just got to be willing. You, you, you got to be willing to fail. That, that's, that's the big one. And that's not a lot of people are willing to do that. No, you learn more through failure than success. So that, oh. is, a, that is a definite. Absolutely. Absolutely. But again, it, it takes, it takes guts to do that. Yeah. My last question just to, to, um, you know, with end of the podcast is what's next for ERA? I think that's a great question. I, I think what's next is going back to the the vision that we talked about. Um, what's next is it next is becoming the brand that we were at one point um, and getting on the map of everybody's and on everybody's radar as the brokerage that doesn't just sit there and say we have all these great tools. It's the brokerage that if you want to be locked arm in arm with your company, this is the one. Um, and I, I think we've already seen that and we're starting to see it more and more. And it, it's almost like you're, you're coming into a real estate club that really is going to take your business to the next level. And it's something that our team is committed to doing for sure. Well, Alex, I wish you well with your Ironman and the training that you have upcoming. Um, I think you're going to crush it based on what I can see right here. So um, thanks for joining Real Trending. Thank you. I'm trying. I, that's the goal. Stacking wins every day, getting closer to it. That's that's, that's the right. Way to it. Well, thank thank you so much, Tracy. I appreciate the opportunity.